So the thing to process is how much Ukraine is going to be going through. So you're going to have to get to a place where you're not sitting on like, I hope this doesn't happen because then you're going to get yourself into a neurotic state. You're going to have to start processing the worst case scenario. And that would be so that would be the thing to actually process at this point is how much more pain and suffering that Ukraine is going to go through. Obviously, we know where this is going to go. We know that if we're looking backwards, that the history is going to show that that unfortunately, the Russian people are going to go through so much more hell um, in the long run. But it's it's very painful because we're all in it right now. This is this is the current reality and that. I, for me, what has helped me is, is recognizing that the sacrifices that the Ukrainian people are making today are literally going to probably be a very huge catalyst change yeah. for um, freedom, uh, you know, overall for the world. Um, yeah. A lot more communication is happening. Fucking yeah. A, blast, blast. Like a lot more communication is happening and, and uh, probably a lot of government uh, changes. And unfortunately, Russia is going to go through pure hell. But I would say in the long run, because of the sacrifices, because of the heroes that are happening in Ukraine right now, there's going to be a massive change that will be overall for the good and decades from now will be overall for the good. But our current reality is I do think that there's just going to be a lot more pain until that implosion will happen with Russia. Why did Putin invade? Why is he doing this? Why is this happening? Well, if you were the kleptocratic dictator sitting on top of a country that you were keeping poor and unhappy and backward with no plans to do anything but more of that for another few decades, how would you feel about a big, culturally similar neighboring country where your population and their population had lots of family ties, lots of connection, lots of overlap, lots of reason to identify with one another? And in that large, culturally similar neighboring country, they recently threw out the pro-Russia puppet leader that you had installed there. They took economic steps to ally themselves with Europe more than with you. They then elected by a huge margin a popular Russian-speaking guy who wants ties with the West and Europe and the United States, a new, young, charismatic leader who said the night he was elected that everybody in the former Soviet states should look at his election and know that anything is possible, that anything is possible, even in the former Soviet world, thanks to democracy. The threat posed by a free, democratic, Western-minded, modern Ukraine that's like a skeleton hand that might grab you by the ankle if you let your foot drift too far off the edge of the bed at night. And nearby, he wants and needs not a sphere of influence, but a sphere of insulation around his own poorly run shambolic nation. A sphere of insulation for himself and for what he's done to his country. A sphere in which the governments of those other nearby nations also suck. Leaders that also don't serve their people, that answer to him, that are corrupt and manipulable and they offer nothing to their people. Anything other than that, anything better than that, and the Russian people might start getting ideas about what their country should be like, too. If a government nearby to Russia proves to be anything other than a shambolic disgrace, well, they've got to go. The day we're recording this is Friday, March 4th. We're going to be talking about the Ukraine, Russia, Putin situation, what the fuck is going on. It's a lot of negativity for all of us trying to process this, especially the Ukrainians that are going through it. It's, it's been it's like, this is kind of what we're talking about of like, hey, save your drama for fucking real problems. Yeah, this right. would be a real problem. This would definitely be something that's okay to be very stressed about yeah. and have some cries about. All right, what is Vladimir Putin specifically, what is he going through? Whatever, this like, is what it looks like if it builds when up. your functions are left in subjective land for year after year after year after year, completely unchecked. You don't have any objective reality coming in and, and saying, hey, knock it off. Like he's just been surrounded by yes men for so many years. This is what it looks like to leave the human alone in their own filth in their own savior. Very well said. Track. Very well said. You see the same thing with Trump, where he's just yeah, kind of right. trapped in his own world, doing whatever he wants. So Vladimir Putin is a sleep IJ, a mopey, blast last sleep IJ. So what's the story of those? By the way, you don't see them much, right? Yeah. You see the stories of the extroverts, the EPs running around with their hair on fire saying, free the information. And we right. all laugh at them and they're kind of harmless because they're double deciders and, and whatever. They're just onto the next thing the next day. On the next Th thing. That's what's interesting about OE. It's like, they're not going to put together a consistent, I'm going to hammer in one spot. Only only one type does that. The sleeps do that. Right. And right. then the Karens, you got the extroverted DJs. They'll yell at you at Starbucks and then it's all over w within yeah. 45 minutes, right? The extroverts... Most of the time, of course, they cause a lot of damage to a lot of people. Yes, absolutely they do. But for the most part, in my opinion, the extroverts, whether you're, you know, extroverted function first, you cause a lot of self damage right. is what it seems like. When you have the introverted functions that like then go to attack, they, they tend to hurt others because yeah. they're doing it off of only self-interest. We, we, don't, we don't talk about this much, but we do see like certain types of murders and crimes clustering yeah. in the docks and stuff. So we just 
one generality we can say that like a lot of the, a lot of the school shooter types or yes. like IP types, yes. you, you know, or DI types. We and don't so, talk about it a lot, but that is something that we see. We have done a lot of work on. Yeah, that's why we're yeah. seeing this kind of work eventually is going to be heading towards, you know, right. crime and stuff like that. Right. So anyways, you have the DIOI, and that right. could be an IP or an IJ, where you have a very unique situation where the math is going, I have my way. Yeah. I have my way, and then I have my plan. And then if it's if it's a mope, if it's blast last, I'm going to fucking cook on it for 30 years. Right. And I'm going to cook on it and I'm going to stew about it and I'll, I'll, I'll muddle it out. I'll talk about it, but I'm going to just be going over the same old shit. So I've watched a right. lot of documentaries of Vladimir Putin this week. Uh, there's a really good one I recommend. Um, Charlie Rose, 60 Minutes. I think it aired in 2015. It's a really good one as far as like the tra- like some of them, the challenge of the translations. You know, oh, I, mean? I so know, like right. The, the I know. production was really good, was really fast. Yeah. So if you're going to watch that one, 60 Minutes, um, and, and no matter how many of these documentaries or interviews you hear of Putin over the last 10 years, He's been banging the drum about Ukraine this whole fucking time. He says the same thing. He basically looks at Ukraine like the United States would look at Texas if yeah. Texas broke off. Every type, there are good guys and bad guys of every type. Because we can we can show you a bunch of types that are this type. or closest. That are extremely positive and growth mindset right? and doing good in their life. If you've got this fixed mindset identity, which seems to be with Putin, if he feels like the world's out to get him yeah, and right. he can't move and I'm stuck, and he's been complaining about the same thing for 30 fucking years, right. kind of sounds like fixed mindset. Also, in, in ending here, I just wanted to say our hearts are with you at this time. Our hearts are breaking. Fuck. <laughs> it's like as soon as I'm saying it. I, I know. It's it's really... I'm like, fine, fine, fine. And then as soon as I'm having to say it. It's been it's been emotionally very hard, yeah. Yeah. So our hearts are with you. We know that this is extremely difficult. Um, get some good cries in, yeah. and then give yourself some good rest time because the cries are going to be just very tolling. Um, but do know that this doesn't mean devastation forever. That's the thing to process. This doesn't necessarily mean devastation yeah. forever. Don't let yourself go to that neurotic place. Right. Start putting your energy into get your emotions flowing, get your cries out, do that processing, and then go do your work. Go go do your day. Go actually get some energy out and, and focus on things that you can do, you know, yeah. things that you can give, ways that you can actually put energy into to feeling like you're doing something to resolve part of the problem.